Welcome to Mayo Clinic q and I'm Dr. Sanj Kakar. Knee pain is a common problem that can have many causes. Whether from arthritis, injury or overuse, knee pain can impact the quality of your life. When the knee cartilage or the lining of the bones is damaged, there are many treatment options available, including a new method that uses a patient's own cells to grow new cartilage. Joining us today is Mayo Clinic orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Daniel Saris. Thanks for joining us today, Dr. Saris. So before we dive into the new treatments, uh, Dr. Saris, maybe you can explain to us actually what is cartilage? Yeah, so cartilage is the smooth surface that you have on all the bones in your joints. So, so to make sure that the bones just don't grind on top of each other, uh, Mother Nature, our developer, put a smooth gliding surface on top of the bones, which is the articulation, and that makes it possible for us to use our joints with very little energy and almost no pain. So as you said, Mother Nature is, an, is ingenious in terms of how to repair the body. For example, if you cut your skin, invariably the skin heals. Is that the same when you injure cartilage? No, and that's actually done so by design because cartilage doesn't have any blood vessels. Cartilage doesn't have any nerves. And if you think about it, that makes perfect sense because who would want to walk on their blood vessels and who would want to step on their nerves? That would not be smart design. So from the way we use it every time, it makes perfect sense. However, if you damage it, you need nerves because they tell you, oops, there's something wrong. Just remember when you burn your finger, right? You pull back. Uh, or when something needs to be healed, like you said, the example of the skin or a broken bone, it heals very well because of blood supply. And that's exactly the challenge that we have in cartilage because if it functions, it functions wonderfully. But if it damages, it damages and is that way forever. It does not uh, repair itself. And that's where the challenge comes for us clinician scientists. And there's some really interesting solutions we'd like to talk to you about. So we use the word arthritis every day. W what exactly does that mean? Because I hear there's several types out there. And, and what are you talking about when you're talking about knee arthritis, for example? It's always difficult to find out what patients or colleagues mean when they use the word arthritis. And for me, I think I separate it in two areas. So one is the inflammatory arthritis, so to speak, diseases like rheumatoid arthritis and immune diseases where the body itself has an inflammatory situation where the chemicals, so to speak, in the joint damage the cartilage. And that means the whole joint is affected. There are ways to prevent this if you intervene early in the disease there are ways to mitigate this if you manage the disease you can slow down the arthritis process and then there is arthritis proper the one that most of us encounter and many of the patients that we see have and that is the wear and tear of every day the mileage of what we do with our bodies the damage that you incur from doing sports having a heavy job taking care of your loved ones sometimes just um, the genes Arthritis can damage your joints without it really being understood how and why. It's a fact of life. So this type of arthritis, I'm assuming, is osteoarthritis, what you're referring to. Yes. What are the treatment options uh, that are available uh, for most patients today? The very best treatment option is the final one. So the total hip replacement and the total knee replacement, because I'm a knee specialist, are the most successful medical procedures after uh, malaria prophylaxis and the appendectomy. Uh, it's just 98% uh, good results for 10 or 15 years and sometimes even longer. That's very, very impressive. Those numbers are only so good if the patient is older, uh, sedentary, uh, doesn't want to run a marathon or, or climb a mountain or like we have now, rake the leaves and uh, get ready for winter. Because for younger patients with an active lifestyle, with responsibilities in life that need them to be able to use their joints actively, the results of uh, joint replacement are not as good as when we use joint replacement in an elderly population. So there lies the challenge. So in these younger patients that you said that are not amenable for joint replacements, historically we've used cameras inside the knees and we've made different treatment decisions in the knee to try and create the cartilage to, to grow. Can you talk a little bit about what historically has been done for that? So when, as you say, cameras are used, you mean in arthroscopy, we take a look in the joint and without opening the joint, we can still evaluate the whole joint and choose uh, and apply what is the most effective treatment. And up to probably 15 or 20 years ago, we thought that 
creating the natural scar healing response that you have for your skin or your broken bone would be a good solution. So we poked holes. We literally poked holes into the bone through the cartilage, um, hoping that Mother Nature would make a scar there, and she does. But as part of Mother Nature, she also makes that scar turn into bone. So at some point, these people felt as if they were walking on a bony spike, uh, which hurt and created, again, clinical complaints and osteoarthritis. So what was previously thought to be a good solution, the microfracture technique that you refer to, making a scar through an arthroscopic procedure, just doesn't treat the patients for any extended period of time. We now have the capability um, to use transplants of cartilage and bone. So if you have a small defect in your uh, cartilage somewhere that hurts when you walk on it, we are able to use cartilage and bone from your own joint uh, to fix the hole in an area where you walk on it. But your joint is not that big and we don't want to move the problem, we want to solve the problem. And that means that if the cartilage defect is bigger, uh, you cannot solve it with your own tissue. That means that you need donor tissue from a deceased donor like we do for heart or lung or skin uh, or cornea transplants, we can also transplant cartilage and bone. That is something that's quite involved. There are not that many donors and we have very many patients. And that brings us to the final uh, really exciting solution that's possible now. You can take some cartilage from the defect that you're going to clean anyway, just like when you do wallpaper or painting, you don't just slap paint on the old stuff, right? You clean it up, you make sure that it's a good solid basis to work from. We do that in surgery as well. And that tissue has cells that are still perfectly fine. We can take those cells, we can send them to a lab to culture the cells from the patient themselves. And after a few weeks, we get that paint back and we can fill the defect with paint from the patient's own cells to heal the cartilage in a new technique that Mother Nature had not provided to us, but we have now developed as part of the regenerative medicine uh, initiative at Mayo Clinic and the cartilage care clinic that we have at Mayo. Now, you mentioned earlier that you're a clinician scientist and you're telling us about a treatment now that I'm sure you spent years and years developing. Can you tell us a little bit about what you've done uh, behind the scenes for now to bring this innovative treatment to Mayo Clinic? So how many days do you have, Dr. Kakar? Uh, you know this is my toy. But it was a group effort to begin with. And I was fortunate enough uh, when I had my practice back in Europe uh, up to 2017 uh, to be part of a consortium where we did a trial across a large part of Europe where we compared the technique of drilling the holes we just talked about with the technique of using the patient's own cells to culture them in the lab. It's, this is called MACI. Uh, and this is a matrix using autologous chondrocytes that are implanted from the patient themselves. In this trial, we were able to show that it is clinically really better, it is more reliable and safer, and even up to five and now 10 years, the results of the cultured cells are better than the results of the scar tissue that Mother Nature makes. Uh, we carried over those results here to the uh, American space, and since 2016, uh, this is now registered standard of care in the American healthcare system, insurance companies pay for it and that means you can now treat your patients with that it does need specific skills and specific expertise and that's why we and a few others in the united states but why we at mayo clinic have the cartilage care clinic where we can evaluate these sorts of patients we can talk to the patients their family their coaches listen to them and their stories and see what's best for them and almost always we have a fitting solution for what keeps them from being active fit and happy what are the type of patients that you're seeing that best benefits from this Macy treatment? So they have to be between 16 and 50. Um, their BMI has to be athletic. So I think the number is 35. They have to be non-smokers because you need good, healthy cells, good, healthy tissue. And as you know, smoking does not allow that. And then they have to have a joint that has articular cartilage that is intact, except for the defect. If you already have arthritis, like we spoke uh, about in the beginning of our discussion, that's still a pretty difficult situation to manage. There are indications where we can still repair a joint when it's going downhill, but the best patients are the ones that are young, that ja damage their knee during sport or because of disease. And if you find these patients early, you treat them early, 
you can really change the course of the disease for their knee and for them. And we know that those results are great, uh, 13, 15, and now even 20 year results in active patients that do sports. Uh, and even some of the people that you like playing soccer, football in, the, in Europe, they benefit from these sorts of interventions and they return back to a high level of athletic capabilities and even the Olympics. Well, I remember when you were telling me about this. I mean, the, the results are just outstanding. And as you said, you have a, an amazing team behind you, enabling you yeah. to see these patients and help them that uh, prior to this, I think the options were rather limited. Like in sports and actually like, like in family life, it's a team effort. So we're really fortunate to have that sort of a team at Mayo Clinic where, where people help us find the, the right solutions, where people also help us ask the right questions. And one of the students came up to us and said, you know, you're doing two surgeries. You're going into this patient's joint to take an arthroscopy and take a look. And then you're cleaning out the tissue and you're sending it to a lab. And the lab sends the patient uh, quite a big bill because it's biotech. Can't we come up with a solution where we do this in one surgery, uh, recycle the patient's cells? And can we do this within um, a maybe environment that allows the cells to improve the joint? And can we do this for a smaller amount of money? And one of the really exciting things about Mayo Clinic is that there are so many experts around and we have know-how and we also have a situation where people trust what we say, uh, and rightly so. So within a reasonable amount of time, we were able to design a trial with ongoing now at Mayo Clinic, an experiment where we clean the defect and the, in the joint, like we talked about before with uh, painting or wallpapering. And we recycle that tissue from the patient themselves within the same surgery. And we mix that with donor cells from the donor bank that we have at Mayo Clinic. And now we can just inject fibrin glue into the defect of the patient. We paint the defect with the patient's own cells within one surgery. And we now already know that for one and even two years, these results are quite encouraging. The technique is safe, but it is still an experiment under investigation by the Mayo Clinic supervised by the FDA. And that's uh, that's if if that uh, the results of that study hold true, that will totally revolutionise uh, this uh, problem uh, that I'm sure you see a lot in your daily practice. Um, Daniel, anything else you'd like to add? Well, no, uh, I think that we've covered a lot in a little amount of time. I really appreciate the opportunity to talk to you about that, and uh, I hope people feel free to reach out to us, and they can do so through the Mayo Clinic website. The Mayo Clinic Sports website is just uh, been totally overhauled. We have wonderful video animations of the technology. We have links with all the questions and experiences from patients who have been able to trust us with their care, which we greatly appreciate. Uh, so they should reach out to us and they can use our email address, which is me at mayo.edu. Uh, and we'll try to answer any questions they have in the best possible way we can. Our thanks to Mayo Clinic orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Daniel Saris. Thanks for being with us today. Mayo Clinic Q&A is a production of the Mayo Clinic News Network and is available wherever you get and subscribe to your favorite podcasts. To see a list of all Mayo Clinic podcasts, visit newsnetwork.mayoclinic.org. Then click on podcasts. Thanks for listening and be well.